I love shikishi board. I've, you know, Yasutomo has had a huge variety of shikishis and tanzaku cards, which are very traditional um, Japanese surfaces for doing very, you know, very traditional paintings and autograph signings and things like that. But, you know, we've kind of, we've sort of starting over again with the shikishi, um, starting to offer a very small selection. I'll just start out. These are the two that we have now. This is, we have a five piece, uh, just a little under three inches uh, squares. They're just too adorable. And they're made with gossan paper, which is a very absorbent, you know, it's got a nice absorbency, but it's not so absorbent that everything bleeds. So it's, there's, and those are five of the same. And then this set is uh, basically a sampler, sampler. It's a five by seven. And they, we have a Hosho, Gossen, and Tordinoko uh, washi papers. Now these are all different. And I'm gonna open this pack up to show you. And really you can, it's gonna, I'm gonna just show you today, I'm gonna demonstrate, I'm gonna just show you all the options that you could do with the, you know, that you can explore with Shikishi. And really it's kind of open to a lot of, lot of things. So I hope you enjoy this. But now there's, this has three surfaces. This one is the Gossen, I believe. I will make sure I don't wanna mislead here, but you've got, um, the Gossen paper, which is a little bit, has a little texture. I don't know if you see that in my, and I'm gonna just realize my lights are a little low. So I'm gonna turn up my lights. I mean, maybe you can see okay, but I'm just gonna turn my lights up just a hair because I kind of noticed that it's a little bit dark in here. I'm kind of in the Friday afternoon mode. <laughs> but there, it's a little brighter for you. Um, so there's a little texture on this one. And then there's another one that's the Tordinoco, I believe. Um, there's Hosho, Gossen, and Tordinoco. This is my, it may be clear, Davey, if you can clarify the yellow, the yellow and the Tordinoco, uh, which one of these smooth ones, if you could tell um, me. So the yellow is going to be the Tordinoco, and then the white smooth one is the Hosho. Okay, that's, uh, thank you. I always confuse them. They're just, but they are both very smooth, and this is a very uh, nice creamy yellowish you know, not bright yellow, but it's it's a gorgeous color. And uh, this one is nice and smooth. So I'm going to show you kind of like a traditional, start with just what things, what happens when you put some ink on these. And, you know, maybe some traditional uses I'll explain. And then I'm going to go crazy and show you all the ways that you can use these uh, papers or these uh, boards. Now, if you notice, these, these have this gorgeous foil lining. I mean, I'm going to move these out of the way. And then I'm going to do a show and tell on this uh, shortly. So you, so whatever I have here, I'll, I'll bring back in the screen. But I just want you to kind of, I need to move all that out so I can kind of start with just the basic information here. Um, but there, oh, these are just fabulous creative surfaces. And I can't wait to explore. I mean, I only have a certain amount of time, right? So I'm going to try to get cover as much as possible. So these, I'm going to open up this pack. And you're probably wondering, well, why did you pick these sizes? Okay, so first of all, the first reason why we picked these little cute sizes, I mean, you just can't pass this up. These are too cute, which is so cute. And they make for little quick little surfaces for creating, being creative. And you know what? I think they're so adorable. I have to show you this. But you know those little cheap easels you can buy, those little wooden easels? Perfect little framed pieces. They're very lightweight. I like the uh, the back the backing has got this really nice back, um, and the foil is just beautiful. It makes for a finished piece. So if you can, you know, get a hold of some of these little inexpensive wooden easels. I've seen them at Walmart even. Um, these make great little little displays for your for your uh, shikishi boards. They look adorable little things. And this is just some watercolor paper, by the way, a scrap of watercolor paper or watercolor that I didn't really like the painting, but then when I cut it down and, and put it on this, it changed everything. So that's one of the, I'll get to that in a minute though, in a little bit. But right now, I'll just wanna talk about the surfaces just as they are. So I'm gonna just scooch all this out of the way and I'll maybe just have one of these. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna start with the little uh, five piece set and I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna do kind of a little, um, a little demo on edigami. Now, edigami is a very traditional, it's actually not 
years, it's not, it's maybe 30 years old, maybe in the 70s, I believe. This was uh, developed by an artist in Japan. And it's a, it's a kind of a picture letter style, very loose, very, in fact, the looser, the better. In fact, if you, you know, this one's one of the little uh, pieces I did, very simple. Um, it, says, it says, keep it simple, but it's a very loose style of using ink and then some watercolor and the, the traditional Japanese watercolors like these. Um, this is a set of 12 and I'm gonna open these up in a sec. These have never been used. <laughs> fresh out of the, fresh off the boat as they say. Um, now, many years for many years we sold this uh, paint, by the way, the Gonzai watercolors. And it would only come like this and people always thought, what is that? It was our mystery, you know, we always had mystery packaging. Well, just recently, we added a little sleeve that it's not only explains what it is, it gives you the color, it shows you the color and a little information on the back. So I'm very excited that we uh, added that and that we have a little, make it easier for everyone to find out what this is all about. But these are the colors and I'm just gonna do a little demo using the ink. And basically with edagami, you basically wanna do things that are um, kind of in front of you. like. If you have a, a cup of tea or if you have a, a leaf, something that's real life, it comes from real life. You don't really want to, um, you know, do something from memory, but it's all right. It's whatever it is. I mean, that's what they do in Japan. And then we can decide what we want to do. I want to do a leaf because it's just simple, but I want to um, explore the ink on this paper. This is the glass. And I'm going to do a small piece because I just don't want to, I don't want to feel too attached or too, concerned about um about the cost you know the size is just it's perfect for what i want to do and just a little thing to do a little expression little thing of expression i'm going to use a wafude brush is another traditional japanese brush for doing drawing calligraphy i also have the sw series brush and that's going to be used for to, to do the lettering but i can also use it for the line work actually I'm going to switch it around a little. I'm going to use the SW for the line work, and I'm going to paint the colors in with my Dafude. But so really, I need to be in the mode of just kind of relaxing. And I've got my ink dish filled with some uh, Sumi ink, and this is the KY series. This is the KY 12. It's a 12 ounces. I like it because it has a pouring spout. It makes it easier to deal with. I like it. It's just a very simple, nice free flowing ink, just basically carbon and water. And I'm just going to make a, some lines now with it. Again. Karen, as we're getting into this, um, somebody yeah. did ask a question about the mini Gassen boards. Um, she was saying that she found they have a delicate surface um, and her brushes damage it easily. Is there a way to avoid this? So maybe as we go, yes. we could address that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yes, it is a very delicate surface. So if you were to scrub or to, you know, repeat pushing, you know, using a lot of pressure, wet. Um, so this is the thing about this on this one. When you're working, don't just do a one-time line um, with a plenty loaded, with a lo brush that's loaded with color or ink so that you're not putting, uh, giving abrasion to the paper, if that makes sense. So I'll just show you what I mean. Now, edigami is very, you gotta be loose. You've gotta kind of hold your brush up, kind of upright, and you kind of just, you wanna be clumsy on purpose. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you don't wanna be tight. You wanna just kind of hold it above your, you know, hold it up and you might even hold it up at the tip. And that creates a, a looser line. I'm trying to not get my knuckle in the camera there. But so you can see, this is truly how I should do it, even though that's not showing, you can't see that as well. So I'm going to lean my brush, but really the correct way is just hold it in the kind of hang, dangle it from your hand and let the, let the gravity of the brush kind of move. And I'm going to just do a very loose little drawing. And I'm kind of doing this wonky on purpose. And I have, if you notice, my brush is really loaded with, a good amount of ink. And I'm just going to let that kind of natural kind of wonky move. That, that's what I'm looking for. Just kind of soft. Um, I'm just letting that kind of happen. And I don't want it to be a perfect line like this one here. I, I was not as loose and it's not as interesting to me as this line here. And that's by because I'm holding it a certain way and letting 
I'm letting my breath, letting my nerves just kind of make these lines. Try not to control, let go of control. That's the word I'm trying to get rid of, trying to let you have that. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to do another one. So let me explain. I'm going to do another line drawing just like this. You know, doing several is good. You can just, you know, maybe leaves, whatever you want. I'm going to do leaves because it's just, I'm here in my little space here. I don't have something in front of me. So I'm just going to make another leaf shape. And I'm, and if I, you know, I'll explain this as when I watercolor these. So I want to let this ink dry before I do the watercolor. So I'm going to do a few. But um, to answer the question about that, uh, about the, the delicacy of the paper. Yes, you you want to, you have to be careful not to over brush it. Like, and I'll explain that when I do the watercolors. Um, but there we go. Just nice little soft kind of love. Just there we go. And I'm going to do maybe one more. Now you could do a series like this, like I'm doing, or you can change it up. But I always like to do a, some, a series of at least three because then I'll pick my favorite out of three. And these can be used if I make a boo-boo and if I don't like one of these, I am going to show you how you can repurpose it. You can repurpose these and, it, and it's all good. So, you know, these, they, I, I know the cost is, can be maybe, you know, it feels like they're expensive, but they're already pre framed, pre framed, and the gold foil resists color. And I'm just going to do another one real quick. And this time I'm going to go with the spine of the leaf. And then I'm just going to kind of just let my, just let myself be free here with the, with the shape. And I love that. So, and then maybe, maybe in this one, I might even just kind of thicken that just for fun, create a little shape here. I might even do that with this one here. Just, I see this opportunity to kind of fill in some color. So there, like that. Now, I'm gonna let those dry. Hopefully the first one, it will dry. Uh, well, it shouldn't, doesn't have to be perfectly dry to get the, to fill this in because the this ink is, is in there. So while I have the ink and I'm gonna let these dry a little, I'm gonna just kind of, do some practice lines on these other surfaces on the five by sevens, just so you kind of get an idea of what how ink is on these. There we are. So this is the Torinoco, and I'm going to make a line. I'm just going to make a shape. So I'm going to make a leaf, and I'm going to do the same technique where I'm just going to go um, on this, and I'm just creating the spine or the the section here. And you notice that the color did not soak through it kind of floats on the surface a little bit and that's beautiful it's going to be different for each piece of board this is floating on the surface i can see you can see it's sort of uh, puddling i don't know if you see that on that but this is definitely floating on the surface rather than um rather than soaking it so this is just a different it have a different feel so i'm going to just kind of go to make a second leaf and i'm just doing a little Maybe just leaving it like that. I think that's fine. I need to leave space. When you're doing this, you think about the space that's around it as well. So I'm going to just, so you can see that's what the Tordinoco does. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the host show. And I'll do exactly the same. We'll try to do something similar. I'll start with the going up. And I, this floats definitely doesn't float on. It soaks in a little bit more. And it takes that stroke much more, um, you know, there's a little bit, it soaks right in basically rather than float like on that one. Now I'm just gonna do another kind of a free little loose leaf shape and I'm getting variation in line and I love it. I love the nice depth of the color and, or the ink. And if I hold my ink a little bit longer, I can actually create difference in just by holding it down i'm going to create um let the it's basically soaking in so that i'm i'm creating new shapes just by letting that soak in and this one i won't do as well as much but and just kind of play but i'm just going to go a little bit like that there we are and maybe i'll continue this line all the way through all right so basically you can see it's a different kind of a different feel to it now i'm going to do this on the gossip that's going to be another, it's just going to be a different experience. So I'm going to do, I'll try the same thing. Load my brush up with plenty of ink and I'll start at this corner and I'm going to move myself up and just kind of let that organically move up. 
And it feels similar to this, but it has a texture, a little texture to it. So it soaks in just as, soaks in very nicely. And um, the way I do the watercolor will we'll definitely tell what, how the, what the difference is. I'm gonna hold this brush down a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of let my, maybe pause it a little bit and you can see it's, it shows every pause and every bit of motion that I'm doing, which I kind of like. I'm gonna hold it and just let that pause and kind of come around. And I like this little sort of lumpy look. And I'm doing that just by pausing, um, pausing a little bit and letting that just kind of soak and letting that kind of become a shape on its own. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'll pause it just for a bit and then I'll move faster and then see how I, it gave that knot sort of a shape here. There we are. I love that. I think that's fun. So. I'm going to just leave those there. But so that's just to show you the differences between the three surfaces. And this one has that beautiful yellow surface. And these two are beautiful. But I can see a difference on this end, and it will be more noticeable when it dries. This has, um, I think the paper on this is much more responsive to my, to every motion that I make. <laughs> and I, I love it. That's the Gossen, which the little three pieces are made of that. So I've got enough ink here, I think, to start working. Oh, and I know what else I was gonna do. While I'm here, because I did wanna demonstrate a little bit with mineral paper, I'm gonna take, I've got a little piece of mineral paper that I cut to size. Now I did it to fit over a piece of shikishi. Let's say, there we go. I, I cut it just a little smaller than the shikishi foil edge because I want that foil edge to, you know, I wanna keep that foil edge. And I'm gonna just grab a, piece of like a piece of scrap here or just actually a paper towel just something to kind of do some uh, ink work on and I'm going to do use the ink that I already have I'm just going to create maybe maybe I'll do the same thing a nice little leap we'll see what I can do here um there we go this is just a different kind it's floating on there and how dark that is it's so pretty um you get when you do this, and this can take a little while to dry, but I want you to kind of see what you can do with the mineral paper um, as well. So especially if you did, you have a piece of shikishi that you just aren't that happy with and you thought, oh, I don't really like it. I am gonna show you how to fix that. But this is on mineral paper. So I'm gonna come back to that when it dries and do some coloring and painting. But I'm gonna just kind of get rid of, you know, put, put away the ink for now, because really I don't like to watercolor and uh, have my ink around at the same time. They just aren't a good, they like to be separate. So I'm gonna take my watercolors, my Gansai watercolors, which are finely ground Japanese watercolors. And I'm gonna go through this first one, if this is the first one, I'm hoping I can do it here. And I'm gonna take my, uh, just gets a dish, and I'm gonna take a brush that I don't use for ink. It's always you know, good to get, if you're gonna be watercoloring, don't mix your ink brushes, just set, keep them separate. Like I'm gonna put that aside, I'll clean it, but I don't like to mix the ink brushes with the watercolor brushes because the ink, once that's in there, it's hard to get out completely. So I'm gonna get my water, got plenty of water to work with and my Gunsai watercolors. And I'm just gonna do a simple coloring of this leaf. It's not much, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of color and I like this uh, WF4 because see how it's got a nice rounded, sort of a, um, it's got a nice tip, but it also holds plenty of color in paint. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pick a color out of here. I'm gonna pick this gorgeous ochre. I don't know exactly the real true color name, but it's kind of an ochre color. And I'm gonna just try to kind of thin it out a little bit. And I'm going to put some color onto my paper here. Now, this is where we don't want to overbrush it because it does. If you were to go back and forth with a brush, you will lift up the fibers of that paper. So I'm going to just sort of blot it down rather than brush back and forth, which is tempting. Um, I'm just going to kind of drop the color in and kind of dab it with my brush, kind of just drop it and dab. You know, and, and I could lay my brush down like that but I'm not brushing back and forth. I'm not going back and forth on the paper. I'm just touching it on the surface. And I'm gonna do some, get some green, this gorgeous green, kind of a 
And these can be mixed together just fine. And I'm just gonna put this green and I'm gonna mix it in. I'm just gonna kind of dab it um, here and there. I can also create a larger surface area. See what I'm just, I'm not brushing back and forth. I'm just dabbing. Dabbing, a little dab will do. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take this gorgeous celadon green or whatever, this is a gorgeous green. It's kind of more opaque. But if you thin it with water, it's still transparent. I'm just going to dab some more of that here and there and kind of just creating a, a very mottled sort of uneven effect here on my on my card here. Now. But I don't want to, like I said, I'm not brushing uh, over and over it. And then I'm going to take a little yellow. This you can be as, you know, you can do whatever you want with this, but I'm just going to try something different. I'm going to put this and fill that in. I'm going to leave that like that. That's it for that. Um, and I'm just going to let that dry. You can see with that blue, that green really kind of almost covered up the, the black line. So it's pretty opaque. So that's that one. And let me go over here on the tardy knuckle. I'm going to do the same thing. The thing is with this paper, this the color is going to float on top more. It's going to be a different thing altogether. So I'm just going to take, let's see what I've got here. That's the black. I don't want to use that. I'm trying to get some blue, here we go. There's our my really gorgeous blue. And I'm gonna use it, this time I'm gonna just use it more like a watercolor, but I'm gonna go just plenty of water. I'm just gonna let that kind of float. And you can see it's floating rather than soaking in. I'm just gonna bring that all the way around, around the leaf, maybe just the whole thing. And it doesn't have to be with the, the edigami. It's meant to be loose, a loose style. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the lines, but you can also see that the what the ink has soaked in, it's permanent, you know, the semi ink is not bleeding, which I love. Um, I think it'd be fun to put some metallic on this, but I don't have any um, with me, but metallic watercolors would look gorgeous with this. And I'm going to put a little yellow to see if I can get a, a mix of some yellow to make a green out of this. I'm just going to just gently glide it on top and then we'll leave it like that. Simple, simple, but that is just how that looks on the Tordinoco. Now I'm going to bring in the Kassen and just let those kind of sit and just see how spontaneous this is. There's not a lot of, I'm not really doing a lot of thinking here. In fact, it's, it's usually supposed to be a meditative uh, art form, but because I'm talking, it's a little different, but this one, I'm going to do more like I did on the other. I, if I brush it like this, you can see it's soaked right in. See how that, that soaked right in and went matte right away. There's, you know, it knows what I did. This one is more forgiving. It was a it kind of blended more like a, you know, to let the watercolors blend it on the paper. This, the paper is going to soak it right up. So that's just to show you how it's a di how different it is. Now I'm going to try, I'm going to do more of the blotting technique with this one because it's just going to soak right in. And I'm going to be loose. I'm, I don't want it to be, you know, perfect. And this is different than our watercolors that we would use on a, a sized watercolor paper because um, the paper is it was very absorbent. And I, if you notice, I'm not brushing, I'm not dragging the brush uh, back and forth. I'm actually just dabbing it, the color on, which is, you know, just a completely different type of uh, technique than using uh, what, you know, the 140 pound size papers. I'm just gonna go, and this is a bigger one. So I've got more of a challenge. I can leave my whites too. And I have to remember, you know, the white of the paper is good. So I'm just gonna kind of go, maybe just dab some color in here, just playing around. And maybe I'll leave a little white in here just to show the highlight of the paper. But I am definitely not dragging this because I know that it will, um, it will damage the paper surface if, if I keep doing that. So just going to add some little dark little spots here, just down the spine or down the, the vein of this leaf. And I think I'm just going to add a little yellow here and there and just kind of splotching color on. And I'm going to leave that alone. As tempting as I want to fill that in. Yeah, I'm very tempted to fill it in, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let that light color stay. And we'll come back to that when it's dry, but see the difference between the Torinoco and that. Big difference, just, you know, I'm using the same paint. And if I were to just use a regular watercolor, it would still be the same as far as one would float and the other would 
would not. Now this one, oh, here we go. This is the uh, host show. And that's another, let's try it, this one. Let's try uh, maybe fall color since I'm, even though it's definitely spring, but I'm gonna just try a different color because I wanna try the different colors on in this palette. Oops, I got some magenta in there and I don't wanna do that, but, or carmine. This one is gonna soak in too. So I'm gonna just blot some color on. I'm just gonna kind of do it right in this little part here and try not to be, just trying to be expressive. And that's what's so much fun about these colors. I'm gonna take, get that out of there. That shouldn't be in there. <laughs> these colors are so much more opaque than regular watercolors. And you'll notice that your water, they don't mix together the same but they're so lovely and they are perfectly, they're developed to go on this, this kind of washi paper. And because once you put it on there, it's not gonna move. I can put some things over that and it's not moving. It is gonna stay in there. It's just the way these are uh, formulated. Now I'm gonna take uh, maybe some, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna be a little wild here, maybe. I'm gonna take some of this blue and I'm gonna see what happens when I put a little of a blue right in here. I'm just gonna dab it right in there. And maybe just a little in the center part, like so. And I just want to see if I can make a purple by putting that blue, layering that blue over that carmine color. And I got something kind of nice, but it soaked in pretty well. There's a little bit of water floating on this because I really loaded it up with a lot of water. And now I'm going to take some yellow. This is kind of like taking my primary colors, right? Trying to get my primaries in and see what happens. I'm gonna just put a little bit of yellow maybe right in this section. I'm just gonna lay it in kind of in this section. And I just wanna see if that becomes a different color. And it, and it does. So you can layer with these, but it's just a different type of technique. And I, I'm keeping my brush nice and wet because I don't wanna over, scrub the area. I'm gonna see if that turns into a green if I just layer that yellow right over it. There we go. And so I wanna keep some of that blue too. So that's that. And I think I like the way the, the paint responds. Again, um, I love to try using metallics in here and see what happens. Okay, so let's go into here. So now you see where with this, how these accept the colors, how they accept the inks and I think uh, I'm going to try something a little more bold here, a little bit more saturated. And I'm just going to dab, just paint that brush with one stroke only, not scrubbing it. And then I'm going to kind of come in here with a lighter, um, a lighter blue, maybe just some green, touch a little green in that blue together. This time I'm just going to go around here and leave it that way, like that. And then you can do the same. So with this one, I could just create little dots if I want. And I'm just kind of dabbing the, the these little colors over it. And then let that soak just a little bit. And I'm gonna put a color of yellow over it and see how, how I can layer. And I'm just gonna make a very thin wash of the, of the yellow. And it's still wet though, we'll, we'll see how it layers. It's probably gonna smear around with this here, but let's try. There we go. Now it's going to pretty much keep keep retain the shape except for where the spots were, where the uh, wet puddles were. But see how can't wait to see that dry. But I love these. They show every stroke. They show every thought. They show every movement, which is really really fun. Um, and just Karen, gonna... could you? Because we're getting a couple of questions as we go. Could you um, kind of like lay on screen and just name which. Um board is which because I'm or maybe even like put a little note or if you have a scrap of paper just so that people realize that the yellow is the Tori Noko. Oh yeah so let me do a little uh, I think that'll be helpful. So would you like me to write it on the thing or let's see I know what to do. Let me grab a little post-it note and I'm gonna just take a little little post-it here and some white. So this one is <laughs> I'm gonna grab a white pen. I'm gonna put there we go. This is the Torinoco. And if I'm wrong, yeah, correct me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Of course, yeah, you got it. Yeah, I got it, right? Okay, so I'm going to just use a, a white paint marker. It's going to take me a second to get this thing started. If this is a good idea, thank you. So that we'll... Uh, I always get ideas from all of you, by the way. Um, so keep them coming. 
Let's see. So let's just try to get this. This is totally no. Oh, that's not working. So yeah, you know, we had to create thing. a bunch because um people were even asking about if the boards come in black, which they don't. But I did tell them to stay tuned because you have a, a cool trick that you're going to show people. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. Like to I'm gonna. Okay, so there is the Torinoco. Okay, so we got the one labeled. Da, 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 da. Okay, now Thank you. you're welcome. <laughs> and this one is the Hosho. So I'm gonna just put that one on. We might as well make everything pretty, right? Let's just aesthetically everything. Since we're doing this edigami, there's something about the whole, you know, having a nice aesthetic. This is the Hosho. I'm gonna put. Hopefully, that's sticking on it. No, it's not sticking. Why isn't it? Oh, I know why. <laughs> You know why? Because I had the sticky part down. There we go. I was going to do it this way so it would stick to the board. There we go. That's the host show. So we're going to do host show. All right. And that's that. And then the next one here. And then we'll always know this is the gossip. So let me just put that on there. I'm just going to turn this over. And look how they're, the little strokes are drawing and they're showing every little thing. I just, in that little halo of, like the bleed out, I think looks really cool on these. This is the Gossin. So we've got Gossin. Okay. Now we're good. So of course, we all know that the little ones are all Gossin. Okay. So this, now this is, now I'm ready to do the next step, step of edigami, by the way. So the next step is to think of a quote, a word or something. And this is where we bring our ink back in. Now, if I take away my watercolor for now, I'm just going to take it out of the picture for a minute. And I'm going to just bring my ink back in to the picture. And I have to think of, a, of something like, and maybe if you have an idea, you know, it'll be fun to have the you viewers, whoever's watching, and I wish I could see who's here. And I want to just welcome anybody who's here, anybody who came late, <laughs> or people who are just arriving. We're just happy that you're here. I'd love to get, and Phoebe, please, like, put in there, what words should, or thoughts, or quotes, and what would you put on the mix of these words? I mean, we could do a whole, a whole statement, or we can do one word, or keeping it simple, but usually I like to kind of think, when I look at the image, I like to kind of come up with something that's sort of meaningful, but, you know, I'm We got talking. one suggestion so far from Randall for peace. Peace. Love it. So when you're doing that, okay, so I'm going to do peace and um, one of these. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about this here. Um, maybe this one. Now, so when you're doing one of these, this is the five by seven, so I've got more room. But on the little tiny ones, which peace would be perfect on these, you have to think about Ooh, your lettering. We've got a few more already. Kitty. Hey, Kitty said transformation. And then Cheryl said suggested nature. Oh, love it. So if, so... Oh, so I'm going to use my, oh, I love it, transformation, nature, and the other one was peace. Love it. I'm going to do all three of these. So and the if there's another to, one, we also got growth in there. Growth <laughs> is also good. Oh, I love that word. Thank you. In fact, I'll use growth, peace, and there was another word. Oh, boy. You'll have to tell me. I'm going to do growth first because it's first in my mind, and it was the last thing said. So the next word you can yell out. Um, but I'm going to put, I have to think about the white space. I have to think about, this is where I need to, you know, I don't want to fill it up so much that I don't have white space. So I have to think about the size of my words. I have to also think about the little chop, um, which I'm going to, oops, I forgot to bring out. I'm going to bring this real quick. There's a little signature, the little part of the edigami that makes it really special. It's your own little signature. If you have one, um, these I made from little, I just cut these out of erasers. They're like little, they're just my little initials. But if you want to have, you can get a Japanese chop, you can get, you know, there's all kinds of different things. But those are part of the design. So you have to think about that. And I'm, I know this isn't the right, um, this isn't the oil, the Japanese ink, but that, that stuff, you know, isn't the easiest to use and it's kind of toxic. But I use Carnation Red by Ranger. It is the perfect red. It's the perfect red for this. So I use it because it's water-based pigmented. And you can see that's just the nice kind of a vermilionish, you know, warm red that you're trying to come up with. So I'm going to do the word growth. And I'm going to think about where I'm going to put this as well. You know, kind of like it's a design thing. I can go real big 
or I can go kind of small. You know, where do I want to place these words? Do I want to place it here? I think I'm going to place it here just because the beginning of growth starts down and goes up. So I'm just thinking about where I'm going to, I'm placing this word. And now I'm going to go again. I don't want to be perfect with fancy lettering. The, the more uh, clumsy I am with my brush, that means putting it up high, letting it dangle is better. Okay. Instead of trying to be perfect, like my lettering that I would do on a, with a pen is going to be different than with a brush. So be yourself when you do these. Do, do it the way that is comfortable to you. Now I have to remember the word that I have how many letters. So I'm just going to just try to size it. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to make the word now growth. And I'm just doing it in my own hand. Very, um, you know, just got to have room for the word, for the letters, right? So I'm going to change. I'm just doing it in my own hand. And I'm not trying to be perfect by any means. And I might just use the word grow. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do grow because I'm running out of, I mean, running out of space. So I'm just going to keep, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. Just something like that. Simple, simple, right? Um, I've got that word. It's simple. And that's done. So I'm going to let that one do its thing. Now, the other one was transformation. And there was another one. Which one was that, Phoebe? <laughs> we had, um, yeah, we had a few, actually a few more popped up too. So we had natural, there's sublime, enjoy the wind in your hair. Ooh, uh, I'm going to do that. Transformation, peace. So in peace, yeah. So I want to let, tell you, I cut my hair last Friday after, you know, it was last Friday um, with a Floby. <laughs> and, well, my husband helped me. And, and uh, that that feel the wind in your hair is actually the perfect thing because now I can feel the wind in my hair now um, without it getting in my face. So I'm just going to do a little bit more. I'm going to just go right up here and I'm just going to feel, and I'm trying not to be, Perfect. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to, I want you to see the words or see the uh, lettering there. Feel. Oh, I love that. I'm going to do the really small. And this is where this has become so much fun. And whoever did that knows that I must have cut my hair off. <laughs> Feel the wind. And I'm going to go wind nice and big or bold because that's that's the word I want to emphasize. And, and I'm loving that I can just, I'm not trying to be, you know, like a calligraphy here, perfect. I'm using my breath. I'm just enjoying making this, this sentence, feel the wind in your hair. I think that is so cute. So I'm gonna make uh, this one, maybe in, maybe I'll do kind of like this. You see how loose this is? <laughs> And kind of, I love the term wonky, which uh, Wendy uh, is the one that kind of got me on the word wonky. So I'm going to just make this, here we go, your, and then I have to do hair is last, but there it is. I love this. And this is going to be on my, in my room here because that's perfect. Okay. Feel the wind in your hair. Yes. Now I have room here down here to put my little chop. <laughs> I love that. And the other one was peace. And I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, let those set aside and peace. I'm going to write that word here. I think I know what I want to write on this one. So I'm going to write, um, just, I need to write this and it's going to be, I love, I'm filling my, my brush up with plenty of, oh boy. That's, you know, I was going to say something wrong, spell something wrong. Let there, I was going to do, the, I was going to do it uh, possessively. Anyway, I'm going to fix that. Let there, there we go. That's what I was doing. B, and then you know what the word is. And I'm going to put that right here. I'm hoping I have room and I'm just going to make sure I have room. But as you can see, it's just a very loose style, uh, very much your own personality. Each person has their own style. Now, there's a, an artist and she's an American or living in Japan. Her name's Debbie or Dosanko Debbie. I hope that's saying it right. I hope I'm saying it right. 
Um, she does edigami and she's fabulous. I just ordered her book. I'm excited to get it soon. And she has a whole book on it. So look her up. Um, her, her, she has several, if you just type in edigami, her, her work will show up first. And I know Kitty, if you're here, Kitty Mayer, she does beautiful work. Um, Kitty, um, you can check her out, her, her Instagram page. She does beautiful edigami. So I'm going to do the final part of this experience or to finish this. And on each one, I'm not going to be in love with each one, but, you know, I'm going to love each one as its own, you know, its own thing. So I'm going to pick my chop and I have to decide where I want it. Okay. That's another decision. Oh boy. And then it's done. Once I put this seal on and you could put other, you know, in Japan, they write in English and then they write in kanji and it gets crazy, but I don't, I can't write in kanji. So I'm going to decide where I want this. And I have to think of the white space. I have to think of everything. I'm going to put it down here. And I guess once I've done it, it's done. <laughs> there it is. And it looks like there was black ink on that one. Hmm, interesting. So I think I better dab that off because it's going to look muddy. I don't know how that black got on there, but it did. All right. So I'm going to put this one right in here somewhere. I think it needs to Maybe down there, down there. Uh, it needs to balance. I need I need it to go right in this area. Same area. <laughs> Same. I'm not changing it, but in this one, I'm going to make it right in here. Just like and right. I want to um, comment too, Karen, that I'm putting in the Instagrams for Kitty and Debbie, who you just mentioned. And Kitty Good. is here, but I'm putting the links in the comments for anyone who wants to check out their awesome work. Good. Good, because yeah, though you'll be totally inspired. You, they've inspired me. Um, you know, you notice my red came out muddy. That's because I did had it with black ink previously and it kind of came out brownish red, but it's still, it's okay. I'm not concerned about it. But anyway, there it is. There's the edigami in my own little, with my own, you know, with your help, you gave me the words and I just showed you these, these papers and I, I really like them. So, you know, take a, if you want to take a screenshot, this is a good time to do it, to just get some ideas. Now, now let me go on to off the traditional use. So another use for shikishi would be, they do uh, in Japan, little autographs. You know, this would be a great one to do like a, at, a, at a birthday party and you wanna have everybody sign. You can have people sign all around it or you can put a little image inside and then have people sign around it. So that's kind of what those are for. I'm gonna show you on another, hey to, I'm gonna show you anyway. I'm gonna use this thing here on the, I'd say on the Torinoko, a traditional ballpoint pen or gel pen would be just perfect because it doesn't, it kind of floats, the ink floats on top. Um, you know, no worries, you're going, you're going, oh no, she's going to ruin that. I'm going to show you things that you can do with this. Um, I'm going to just grab a regular pen and I'm just going to grab, where is it? Um, I know I have some here. I'm going to grab some more like, let's say, not a perma writer, but a, here we go, a number five detail master. And if you wanted to sign, like, you know, happy, if you're doing like happy birthday, friend, or whatever, you know, basically this is a good surface to write on. So if you're going to do this for, um, you know, like signing, the Tordinoco would be great because it, it accepts the pen really well. Now, these might be more delicate, the whole show and the Gossam, but this is going to accept my pen really well. And I'm going to use a, a little bit thicker. This is a, a Uniball Air Micro. Um, the same thing. It just floats the the yeah the ink floats just perfectly on it. So um, you can use paint markers. You can use these little. This won't show probably much because it's white, but yeah, it's a little. I don't know if you see that, but there, it's there. Um, so this is be fun for just autographs and for you could put a little photo on it. Anyway, it's perfect for that. Um, but I'm gonna also show you something that you can do with this. Now that I marred it. But I'm going to put these away. Let they're just totally dry now, almost totally dry. But they do have they changed their the look changed drastically after I dried uh, after they dried. And I love the Tordinoco for the floating watercolor effect, and you can see how this, each stroke shows on that. So those are those. Now let's go to the mixed media crazy fun stuff. Now these are some I did this earlier this week, just playing around. Um, if you feel you're nervous, too nervous about doing it directly on the board like I did here, this is just some tulips I did. And then I used a little chop and put be happy. Now, if you feel very nervous about it, you can do the edigami on a sheet like a, 
uh, washi paper. This is 6H. This is our 6H, or this could be the Gossen actually, the 6G. Feels kind of that way. You could do it on separate sheets of paper, and then you can pick the ones that you like the most, and you can mount them on on uh, the shikishi later. You can do that. Um, when you and to mount these, if you want to mount them on a on a blank shikishi, I wouldn't mount one that already has writing on it because it's going to show through. But let's say you want to mount one onto a blank one. Let's see where's my blank ones. Here we go. Um, you can mount it, just cut it to, to be a little smaller than the actual, you don't want to lose that gold foil. So let's say you pick one, this one's a little smaller, I already cut it out. I want that foil, I want that foil edge to show. So I cut it just a bit smaller than the foil edge. And what you're going to do is I don't, you're going to use some nori paste and you're going to mount it. If, if you want me to do it, let me know. I, I don't need to show you. I wasn't really prepared to mount today, but what you would do if you do this this way, you want to spray this with a little water. I'm not the, not the board, but the back of the artwork here. You're going to spritz that with it, just dampen it just ever so slightly. Do you want me? I'm going to show you. What the heck? I'm going to show you. I mean, might as well do this. Um, I've got some plain water. I'm going to spritz it ever so lightly with it. Uh, distilled water is best, so let me, and you know, it's almost three o'clock, I can't believe it. I'm going to have to go through this quickly. I don't even think I'll have time to show you the, everything. So I'm going to, I'm not going to actually show you, I'll explain. This is a spray bottle, I spray it, dampen it, and then I'm going to use the nori paste, I'm going to just brush it on the back, give it a little time to kind of expand, because the paper will expand a little bit, and then you lay it on to the surface, and nori paste will allow you to uh, move it, you know, to reposition. Once you lay it down, just kind of move it with maybe, you know, clean hands and just, or even a brush, this paint will not move off this paper. And then just, you can mount them. You can mount them and get perfect paintings onto these. So that's one way. Um, let me explain other things you can do with this paint, with this stuff. Um, I actually, spray the backgrounds using, see these are, that's just the plain shikishi. Remember talk about black, um, actually having different colors. This, these were white. This was a white background. This was white and I just sprayed it. What I did is I used one of these little splat, you know, cardboard things, it's called a splat box. And I put it inside the splat box. And I use, these are distress inks from Ranger that you can use in acrylic. You spray it, and then um, you got to be careful with the surface because if you rub on the edges, you could. Let me show you. I'm just going to show you. I think I brought some paint. Um, I thought I did some paint for you. Some some distress paint. Well, I guess I didn't. <laughs> anyway, I sprayed it with the distress ink, and then what I did is after um, I after it was this stuff resists the paint. The foil will resist it. So you just wipe it down with a salt, like a baby wipe, and don't really rub the surface, but just wipe the edge until you get that clean, um, you get that cleaned off. In fact, even if it, after it dries, it's still going to be wiped off because it doesn't really, um, it resists that uh, color. It's resistant. So I use a little baby wipe and I just go in here and I just take it and I just clean that edge ever so slightly. You see how it's coming off the, because I hadn't wiped it off all the way. So there, I, I'm not doing it on the paper, but I'm doing it on the edge of the foil. And that's giving me that gorgeous foil edge. So that's one way. So that's how I do the background like that. Um, I also, with gesso, I think with this one, I just spray, I just put gesso, black gesso, and then wipe the edges. And that's what I'll do with this one because I've already done some black ink. So I'm gonna do a black gesso, um, you know, I'll just take the black gesso, brush it on, and then when I, uh, I'll just wipe the edges. And that's how you get the colored boards, which I think is fun. So let me tell you what I do with it. So like this one I did today or this morning because I had a little class where we did folded um, little birds and the birds actually folded out of, out of a strip of washi paper that I had decorated. <laughs> it's this stuff. It was some, I had uh, done this in a demo like, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe not that long ago, but a few years ago. And I just 
I cut it into a strip, and I'm just going to show you. I cut a strip of paper. And this is the washi, so I'm just going to cut. Oh, it's not, I'm not going to even measure. I'm just going to do a little strip, like about an inchish, inchish. <laughs> and what I did, and this is just paper that's had sumi ink and gold, sumi uh, gonsai watercolors actually, and I think it might be the Chinese. Uh, silver and gold. What I did is I just made a little strip, folded it, uh, basically tying it a knot like this until I basically, I'm just going to get a, oops, <laughs> I'm not as graceful as I was this morning. Really, huh? So I'm making a knot like that, and that's how I make the bird shape. It's, it's just too easy. It's just fun and easy. I'm just going to take my paper, and I'm just going to pull that till the edges are smooth, and flatten it like that. And then I just take some scissors. Tell you, it's so easy. I'm going to cut the shape of the head, which I just, all I do is I just make a little, like a rounded shape. And you can cut the beak out of the, right out of the head, or because I'm, I don't do a really good job of cutting that. I'm just going to create like a little, um, kind of think about the size of this. Okay, it's five by seven. So I'm just going to cut like a really cute little, um, little, tail and then I've got that and oh one more little part here to round that out so it doesn't look so oops cutting the whole thing down all right so see I've got the shape of the bird and then I could add a little uh, beak by just taking a little bit of a you know here it's so easy everything is so easy and then I can just glue that on with a little bit of glue and that's how I did that and with then I just did a little watercolor uh, on some white just some watercolor paper and I drew it and uh, then cut it out. Here we go, we've got the beak done. Dun, da, da, da. And I just take a little, I'm gonna glue that just to kind of secure it a little bit here. There, just cause I cut it too far, but there it is. There's my bird and I mounted it on the, the colored shikishi. And there I've got this really cute um, little piece of like a little edigami that's a little different. And I just hand lettered the uh, this with a pen. Actually, I did. I'll tell you what I used. I used this. No, I didn't use that. One. I used the Uniball. This one here, the Uniball Air Micro. And then the very you can add. You know, put your own eye on uh, there. And if you want, you can add. You know, white pens, doodle on it. Anything that you want. Like in here, you can see I added some white just to give it more interest. But that's how you make those. I wanted to share with you. That was how easy that was. And what's great about these is now you have this gorgeous back. If I hadn't mussed it up, I could put like a letter or a poem or something. And I do that with some of these. I'll show you a little. I'm going to go through some of these so you can see how many options you have. This one is just black paint gesso. And I just used some little elements. And on the back, I added this lettered thing because I, you know, got it dirty. So I wanted to fix that. But here's a nice clean part I can. Here is uh, another one where I just cut out a piece of jelly printed paper, glued it with some white glue onto the uh, surface, moved it around until I got that foil to show, and then I added a little lettering. Um, this one is a watercolor that I that I just didn't like, and now I love it. So you know, I put it on there and just like I said, cut it down smaller than the foil so you can see it, and then a little extra lettering on on the back to give it. Just something like, what a fun thing to receive, you know, if you were to send that to somebody, how fun. And then you can put it on your easel as a little affirmation. This one is a piece of a snippet roll that I had made. It's a piece of collaged paper. And I just, same thing, glued it on and then put a little a focal point on it. And like here, like this little snippet roll here, I can just glue. I cut this down smaller and just so that it fits and fits right into that frame. Which I think is fun. Um, this is actually um, this one here is from a collage, um, a big bigger collage that I had cut down, and I'm actually going to do a series because they're so neat. And I've got these other three, and I'm just basically the same thing. Glue, you just glue it on, and you get this in little mini collage already. It's with a frame on it. I just think that'd be that is so cool. And if I wanted to make this a coaster or something, if I wanted, to, not that it, this isn't big enough for that, but I just think these make make a beautiful series. If I put four of them together, once I've got a series of four here, 
I've got a larger uh, six by six painting, you know, as I as I build on this. Well, here we go. No, it's not it. But you can see how I can just make a whole series here with that. And then you have that gold edge, which really does something cool. And this one, I think I showed you before, is watercolor and old watercolor I repurposed. And I've got here another watercolor that I repurposed. And I just did a little words. And really, the, the options, you can just keep doing this. And this one is just another washi paper piece that I cut out and I repurposed. So. And if you find that you you know your edigami is not exactly the way you want it, you can cover it. Now let me come back to this. This is mineral paper. This is my mineral paper piece that I wanted to show. I'm going to show. I know someone, one of our viewers, wanted to know how the mineral paper how we can glue that onto the surface. Um, I haven't painted it yet, but I don't. I'm just going to show you since mineral paper doesn't wrinkle. Yeah, I can put this on and glue it onto the surface. I might even glue it on the back. Let's see how that looks. That would look really good, but on the front or the back, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use some of this glue, and I'm going to show you a little technique. And what I need, though, is a little piece of something that I'm not going to mar my surface. So I've got that there. I'm going to just grab some glue, and I'm going to put it on the back of my mineral paper. And I'm just going to generously, you know, give it a nice, generous, coating here, and I'll put it on the front. I want to have plenty of glue so that it will ooze out a little bit. You see, I've got quite a bit of white glue. This is just PVA. It's like normal, plain old white glue. And I'm going to stick it on top of this um, shikishi here, and I'm going to move it around until I, it's centered. You know, basically, I have all my little edges are just showing evenly. So it's kind of pushing around a little bit. And now that it's there, I don't want to smudge that painting. So I'm just going to use this as my kind of like protection. And I'm going to use a folding tool. I'm just going to drag it across to get all the glue squeezed out. It's going to squeeze onto that edge a little bit. I can see it now. There it goes. And now it's totally on there. And I'm just going to wipe off the glue off the edge a little bit. So I've just mounted that mineral paper. And I see it's a little rough because I... I don't know if you can see that, but it's a uh, some of that glue is hopefully it will flatten out a little, or I can kind of come back and go over it with a, a tool, or even better than that, I might even use my bone one because the bone has a flat surface. So I would use a really flat uh, surface to burnish those edges down so they get really nice and smooth. And then once they're smooth, once you look at it and it's smooth enough then I'm going to paint on top of that. But that's kind of, I'm going to use some watercolor for that. And, but you can see how I wanted to show the mineral paper being glued onto the surface here. And I'm going to use, why not? Because I have my colors out. One last thing is I'm going to show you um, just a little coloring with the mineral paper. And it may uh, or may not move the ink. I'm not sure. We're going to see what happens. Um, because normally um, we with the rice paper, the ink, it doesn't move, yay. Okay, so the this is a little different. This paint is much more opaque. It's not soaking in at all um, into the mineral paper. I just wanted you to see it, uh, how the ink, the Sumi ink is not moving, which I think is a wonderful thing because, you know, some people think, oh no, the ink's not, it's gonna move around. Well, it doesn't move. It It actually stays on that mineral paper without, any movement. Uh, I'm gonna just dab up this a little bit. It's a little messed up. <laughs> I'm gonna just blot it and see what happens. Why not? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I kind of like that. I'll let that sit and I can do a word or whatever, but that's the mineral paper on the shikishi board. And I'm gonna let that dry and that little underneath should kind of clear out and maybe uh, I'll add some watercolor. But is any, does anyone have any questions? Um, Cause I'm kind of wanna make sure we had I know it's an hour. I can't believe how quickly that went. So let me know if you have any questions. I think um, I'm keeping an eye out for any questions, but I think that we're good. Um, and then someone, Kitty, actually mentioned that she's so happy to be seeing what you just showed toward the end of this because she had a, she said she messed up three little Otegami last night and was mad about wasting them, but now she has lots of ideas. Oh, yes. Now you can see Kitty. You can just... 
repurpose, you've got ways to recover it up. Nobody will even know, right? <laughs> what does it say? Bob Ross, this is my favorite thing. Absolutely my favorite thing in the world. We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. <laughs> I just love that. So that will be my parting, uh, that will be my parting uh, statement on this demo today is that we just are here on this. We're here to, when we create, this is what it's all about. It's about happy, about it being happy and or processing things that you need to process. And just, you know, as a way to express yourself. And these little shikishi boards are the cutest little little uh, substrate for making all kinds of things happen, whether they be the traditional way or non-traditional. I just want you to have fun with them. And the little gold, that little gold edge makes everything look even better, you know? <laughs> well, thank you so much, Karen. Um, people loved this. We got a lot of happy comments. Everyone's saying thank you. And I think we're all feeling super inspired. So awesome. if you do make anything, please tag us. We love to see your work. Um, and sorry, Karen, were you going to say something? No, I'm just saying this. I, yes, please tag. Um, and just I'd love to see what you're doing. I think that this, you know, these are just fun. And if you did have shikishi, make these little edigamis, make these little fun, loose uh, watercolors and collages. Just make, just create. And yeah. um, if it inspired you to purchase shikishi, I don't know where you can get this. You can make these. I've never seen, I've never found a way to make whatever this magical foil is that they put on the edges, if that resists everything, I can't find I can't find a way to repeat that. Like I've I've tried and it just doesn't work. So I love these little things um, for making little miniature work, you know, works of art and enjoy, just enjoy. Yes. All right. So we'll be back with another live for you all in a couple of weeks. Um, so until then, enjoy and happy creating and have a wonderful weekend. Sorry, Karen, before we go, yeah. somebody was asking, what was the length of the paper that you made the bird from? Oh, good question. Um, it yeah, was a 12 inch. Bird. It's about 12 inches long um, by about one, a little over one eighth, uh, one, I'm sorry, one eighth, one inch, about one. And, you know, you can do one and three eighths, one and a quarter. You just basically want to strip. Well, I can measure this one. Where did that little, there it is. When I made a little while ago, um, that I'll measure exactly for you. It is oh, <laughs> crash, crash and burn here. Um, this is oh, I have a centering ruler. It's one and 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 it's basically one and an eighth inch wide, and I think it was more like a nine inch piece of paper. But you know, cut strips, different widths will give you different uh, bird sizes. So the, the wider the strip, the fatter the, you know, the fatter the bird. And the wider the strip, the longer the uh, piece you'll need. So hope that awesome. helps. Yes, we got to thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. That's uh, everybody loved the bird too. That was another really cute little trick. It's pretty cute, huh? <laughs> I love, I love it. it. All right. Well, everybody have a wonderful weekend and be and just have I just love to see what you're doing. So please put some things up and and if you tag if you tag me too, Karen Elaine Creative, um, then I'll I'll be sure to see it as well. That would be awesome if you if you can. That would be great. Yes, yeah, so Art, Karen Elaine Creative. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much and have a great weekend, everybody. Bye bye, everybody. Take care. Bye.